Hi everyone, my name is Chase Clark and I'm a GIS analyst at Stantec. The title of this presentation is Integrating Webhooks, Serverless Functions, and Web Tools for Real-Time Updates. The purpose of this presentation is to provide a high-level overview of a design pattern that leverages ArcGIS Online, Microsoft Azure, and ArcGIS Enterprise to provide for real-time data updates. I'll start by sharing the scenario that led to the selection of this design pattern. Then I'll talk about the fundamental components of the pattern and their specific roles, followed by a demonstration of the pattern in action. I'll finish with a short discussion of lessons learned and tips for others that might want to implement this pattern in the future. At Stantec, we collected asset GIS data for a municipal client. This included signpost locations, parking meter locations, and street sign information. And then we decided that we wanted to take the project a step further to see if we could answer questions that a city manager or a resident might ask, like, where can I park at a given time on a given day? Walking along the street, this is what you would see. On the left, you have a signpost with two signs that display the parking regulations at this location. Reading the signs, you will see that the regulations at this specific location vary through time. One sign is for parking by permit only, except on Sundays, and the other is for no parking on the fourth Friday of each month during a certain part of the calendar year during a specific time frame, except on Sundays. Further down the street, you have another signpost with a single sign for a loading zone that has its own time and day constraints. In addition to the temporal variation and parking and loading regulations, there's also a spatial variation. The arrows on this sign indicate that the loading regulation extends outward in both directions from this location, perhaps until the curb ends at a driveway or until it ends at another street. Considering all this information, our goal was to generate a dynamic spatial data set to represent the actual regulations that were present, whether they be parking, stopping, loading, etc., along a given street at a given time. We chose to represent the curb regulations as individual polyline features, and we developed an algorithm in Python to create them. This figure shows an example of the different layers of regulations that exist for a given street. The x-axis shows the distance along the street from one intersecting street to another, and the y-axis is used to arbitrarily offset the different regulations that occur in the same physical space. Dots represent the locations of signposts, and pyramids represent the breaks in the physical curb along the street. The letters below the dots can be ignored for now. What's important to understand from this figure is that the lines representing individual regulations are derived from several other pieces of information that are stored in different data sets, like the locations of signposts, and the location of breaks in the curb. If any of this information was to change, then the regulation lines themselves would need to be updated as well. So to briefly review the problem that we need to solve, we have primary GIS data, and we used licensed ESRI resources to derive additional GIS data. We want to share this data with the client and allow for updates to be made to the primary data. When updates are made, we need to be able to detect and respond to changes and ultimately update the derived data set. In our case, the Python app that we developed was initially implemented in a desktop environment using the ArcPy Python module for geoprocessing. To share the data with our client, we uploaded it to ArcGIS Online and created a dashboard. Looking at the diagram on the right, when the client makes changes to the primary data, 
what we need is some kind of system to update the derived GIS data accordingly. And that brings us to the design pattern itself. This is a basic schematic of the design pattern that we implemented. It all starts with ArcGIS Online. This is where we store our data, where the client can access the data, and where changes in the data are detected. This is also where we configured a webhook to send an HTTP request anytime the data were modified. The HTTP request is sent to a serverless function. We chose to use an Azure function, but there are other options as well, such as Amazon Web Services. The Azure function was written in Python and it serves several purposes. It receives the webhook request, collects information from the webhook payload, authenticates with ArcGIS Online, interacts with the ArcGIS REST API to retrieve additional information about the changes that were made to the data, authenticates with ArcGIS Enterprise, and ultimately executes a web tool, which is basically a geoprocessing service that is hosted on Enterprise. The benefits of using an Azure function here are twofold. First, you can develop your data processing logic in a variety of different programming languages including Python, which many GIS users are familiar with. Second, you have the freedom to insert additional tools for data processing and analysis that can't be hosted or run on the Esri platform. The third component of this design pattern is ArcGIS Enterprise. This is where the web tool is hosted that has access to licensed Esri resources. The web tool uses data from Azure, authenticates with ArcGIS Online, and uses licensed software to update derived GIS data on ArcGIS Online, which effectively completes the circuit. One advantage of this design pattern is that it's modular. Depending on the needs of your project and the goals of your client, you can easily swap out the front end of this design pattern with something like an Angular application and still have access to all of your data processing functionality, including licensed Esri resources through our GIS enterprise. This is a simple web app that I made with the ArcGIS web app builder for the purposes of demonstrating the real-time data update functionality. We have two layers in this map. First layer is for signpost locations, which are represented by the blue points on the map. Each signpost is related to one or more signs, which are stored in the signs table. The second layer is for actual parking regulations that we generated with our algorithm. These are represented by the orange polylines on the map. For the sake of simplicity, I'm only showing a single parking regulation which you can see in the legend with a value of 89. This regulation is for parking by permit only, except on Sundays. Now let's say that I'm a city administrator and I've been getting complaints from the public about how strict the regulations are on this particular street. So the city has decided to replace the signs and relax the regulations by adding a time constraint. So now the signs will be for parking by permit only from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., except on Sundays. What I'm gonna do now is open the editor widget and go through and select all the posts on this side of the street and retrieve the related record for the sign that I'm interested in editing. So I'm gonna click on this post, go down to the related sign, and what I'm gonna do is change the value that corresponds to its parking regulation, which in this case is the MUTCD code. I'm gonna save that and work my way down the street. On to the next one.
And last one. What I'm gonna do now is switch over to Azure. And you can see that the webhook is already fired and we've got some information here. The function has received an HTTP request from the webhook on ArcGIS Online. It queried the ArcGIS REST API and retrieved additional information about the changes that I made. And finally, the function connected to ArcGIS Enterprise and executed a web tool that is hosted there. And this web tool leverages ArcPy to perform additional geoprocessing and ultimately update the regulations layer back on ArcGIS Online. So here we can see the web tool is firing one more time. It's set at a recurrence interval of 20 seconds. So this should be the last of the changes that I made here. Okay, if I <clears throat> switch back over to ArcGIS Online and refresh the page, we can see the changes that have been made. The regulation lines now belong to a new regulation, which is represented by the pink line with a value of 101. In the course of implementing this design pattern, we learned a few things that we thought would be good to share with the community. First, it's helpful to have additional tools for sending and receiving HTTP requests. Even though there's some documentation on webhooks and the information they include in their payload, it's still really nice to be able to view and evaluate the payload yourself with some kind of web-based request receiver. Also, when developing the serverless function, it's essential to have a tool to send requests to the function in place of the webhook. This is just so that you don't have to go through the steps to force the webhook to fire every time you want to test your function. Next, I definitely recommend a nice code editor. For our project, working with Azure Functions, Visual Studio Code was definitely the way to go. Uh, Visual Studio Code made it easy to run the serverless function locally, and it also has an extension that allows you to deploy your function directly to the cloud. Next, this might be obvious to some, but I wanted to highlight it anyways. In order to make this design pattern work, it was necessary to work with two separate Python environments, one for the Azure function and another for the web tool. Fortunately for the web tool, we were able to use the default Python environment for ArcGIS Pro, which made things easier. One difficult part of this design pattern was dealing with authentication across platforms. The app-based login, as opposed to a user-based login, worked really well for authenticating with ArcGIS Online, but it didn't work well for ArcGIS Enterprise. For ArcGIS Enterprise, our workaround was to create a named user account specifically for the Azure function that would access it. In terms of Python libraries for interacting with data across ArcGIS platforms, the requests module provided all the functionality needed to successfully authenticate with ArcGIS Online and also to interact with the ArcGIS REST API. However, when it came time to work with ArcGIS Enterprise, the ArcGIS API for Python came in really handy. The authentication step is handled with one line of code and the web tools are super easy to access and run. In summary, this is a useful design pattern for providing real-time updates to data that are hosted on ArcGIS Online when licensed software, such as ArcPy, are needed for geoprocessing. This concludes my presentation. Thanks and stay safe.